What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Over the last five years, I've been collecting data from all of my fishing trips to determine which baits produce the biggest fish the most often. And today I'm finally gonna share those results using the Fish the Moment Big Bass Index. Let's get into it. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what is the Big Bass Index? Well, over the last five years, I've been collecting data from all of my fishing trips, and three of the data points I've been collecting are the bait I was fishing, the season of the year I was fishing in, and the number of four pound bass I caught on each fishing day. I then use these data points to calculate what I call the Big Bass Index for every single fishing lure I used in every season of the year. Let's use the football jig as an example, which has a Big Bass Index score of plus four. To get this number, I calculated the percentage of 4 plus pound bass I caught in a football jig. I then subtracted the percentage of time I used that bait among all the other fishing lures that I throw. I multiply that number by 100 to make it a little bit easier to read, and I get plus 4.1 for the Big Bass Index. In the simplest terms possible, the Big Bass Index tells me that I'm catching more Big Bass in a football jig than I would expect based on how often I'm throwing it. I use the bait 10% of the time, but it accounts for 14% of my 4 plus pound bass. This means any positive Big Bass Index score means that this bait produces more Big Bass than expected, and anything less than that means that I'm not catching enough Big Bass based on how often I'm throwing it. I use this method to calculate a Big Bass Index score for every single bait in every single season. This allows me to show you which baits produce the biggest fish for me in each season of the year. Let's get into it. Let's start with the winter because that's the season we're in right now. This graph shows my top five baits based on usage percentage in the winter. I then colored the bars based on the baits associated Big Bass Index score. A red bar means it has a negative score, a green bar means it has a positive score. So you can see the finesse jig and the flat side crankbait both have a negative Big Bass Index score number, which means I'm not catching as many four pound bass as you'd expect, even though I'm using them quite often. Over a football jig, a jerkbait, and a lipless crankbait all have positive scores, which means they're good big fish baits for me in the winter. If we change up the visualization, you can see that the football jig stands head and shoulders above all the other lures in the winter time with a Big Bass Index score of plus 22. If we take a look at the data, you can see I throw a football jig 13% of the time, but it generates 36% of my four plus pound bites. That's pretty good. My favorite places to fish a football jig in the winter are on long sloping points that eventually drop off into the creek channel. Depending on the water clarity, I might be fishing anywhere from eight to 40 feet of water. I'm usually looking for some sort of brush pile, rock pile, or standing timber on these points. And it's even better if you can find some shad presence around this point. I've caught a lot of five, six, and seven pound bass on a football jig in the winter time, and if you're not throwing one, you're definitely missing out. My go-to football jig is the Fish the Moment Offshore Jig by Jewel Bait Company. I actually designed this jig for Jewel, and it has a double cable weed guard, a premium skirt, and a unique bait keeper that transfers weight down the shank of the hook, making the head smaller and giving the jig a unique fall. Best of all, you can buy two jigs for $6.99 at jewelbait.com. These baits are produced in the United States and sold straight on the Jewel websites. There's no retail markup, so we can give you a premium jig at a great price. I definitely check them out. If we change up the visualization, you can see my top four baits based on Big Bass Index score. My second highest scoring bait is a lipless crankbait. This is a staple in wintertime fishing, and whenever I'm fishing in shallow water, this is my go-to lure. I love fishing lipless crankbaits around submerged vegetation like hydrilla, milfoil, or coontail grass. My favorite place to look are on large flats with ditches or depressions in them. These are also called drains. I've made a lot of videos talking about my favorite offshore wintertime crankbait areas, and I check out that video here if you want more info, but here's a great graphic to illustrate what I'm talking about. My go-to lipless crankbait is a Strike King Red Eye Shad. I usually throw it in the half ounce version when the water temperatures are below 50 degrees, but when they're above 50 degrees, I'll go to the three quarter ounce version. I always throw this in some sort of red color like the Rayburn Red or a Delta Craw. And I'm trying to throw this bait into the grass, let it actually get down in the grass and then rip it free. This is what generates a lot of reaction strikes in the winter. And anytime you have grass in your lake, the lipless crankbait is going to be your number one option. The other two baits with a positive Big Bass Index score in the winter time are a jerk bait and an Alabama rig. I throw these baits in similar situations, though I find the Alabama rig will generate more fish for me when I'm allowed to throw it in tournaments. But if I'm not allowed to throw it in a tournament, I'll go to the jerk bait, and I'm usually looking for fish on secondary points, halfway back in creeks, 
they are close to a creek channel swing. Here's a great example. You have the creek channel, and then you have a flatter point. And then to try to fish the jerkbait in the Alabama rig for suspended bass that are sitting in 5 to 15 feet of water over deeper water. This is a deadly technique in the winter time, and whenever you're dealing with suspended bass, the jerkbait and the Alabama rig are going to be your best options for big fish. My go-to Alabama rig for big bass is the Yumbrella Flash Mob Junior. I'll usually pair that up with four Megabass Hasdong Shads, and then one five-inch Megabass Spark Shad in the center. I'll be using eighth-ounce jig heads on the outside four wires, and then a quarter-ounce jig head on the center wire. My go-to jig heads are the Zorro Weedless Umbrella Rig Jig Heads. They come through cover really well, and they also have a shaky head hook, so if I do get the rig hung up, I can straighten out those hooks really easily and get my rig back. My go-to jerk baits are the Mega Bass Vision 110, Vision 110 Plus 1, and the Plus 2. These are great jerk baits, though they are a little bit pricey, but I've tested every single jerk bait on the market, and I found that these are the most consistent and the best fish catchers in the wintertime. So definitely don't be afraid of the price tag. Pick them up because they do produce a lot of good fish. Let's change up seasons and look at the pre-spawn. As you can see, I've ranked my top five baits again, and the only baits with a positive Big Bass Index score are the Alabama Rig, the Chatterbait, and the Flatside Crankbait. When we change the visualization, you can see the Alabama rig has the highest Big Bass Index score with a plus 14. This is not a surprise, because most people know the Alabama rig is a super effective pre-spawn lure, and it's actually outlawed in a lot of fishing tournaments because it's so effective. However, whenever I can throw it in a tournament or on a fun fishing day, I usually will just pick it up and throw it all day long because it generates so many big fish. My favorite place to throw an Alabama rig in the pre-spawn is in 5 to 15 feet of water on offshore structure like brush piles, stumps, offshore grass, or anything that's not quite visible to the average angler. These spots are usually found on banks leading into the backs of spawning pockets. You don't necessarily need to be looking for points or anything particular. A flat bank with a brush pile is just as effective as any other area. This is actually the technique I used to catch my personal best bass. It was an 8.5 pounder that I caught in the pre-spawn out of a brush pile in 12 foot of water on an Alabama rig. If you're fishing the pre-spawn and you are allowed to throw the A rig, you definitely need to do it because it generates some giant bites. Changing up the visualization, you can see my top 5 baits based on Big Bass Index score in the pre-spawn. The Chatterbait has the second highest score at a plus 6. A chatterbait is a great big fish bait in the pre-spawn, and anytime there's shallow vegetation in your lake during the pre-spawn, the chatterbait is my go-to bait. I'll basically just look for shallow grassy banks or shallow flats with offshore hydrilla and milfoil and throw the chatterbait all day long. If you keep it in your hand, you're definitely going to put some big fish in the boat. The next three baits all have the same score of a plus two. The flat side crankbait is a great choice in the pre-spawn when your lake has a lot of rock in it. I love throwing a flat side crankbait around riprap, channel swing banks with chunk rock, or secondary points with pea gravel on them. I'm usually just covering a bunch of water and throwing this bait when there's wind and cloud cover, and if you're throwing it in the right areas, you're going to generate some big bites. My go-to flat side crankbaits in the pre-spawn are the Mega Bass Sonic Side Crankbait and the Strike King KVD 1.5 Flat. Next up we have the Lipless Crankbait, and I throw this bait in the exact same place as I throw the Chatterbait, and I find that they're almost interchangeable. The reason I like to go with the chatterbait over the lipless crankbait is it usually comes through grass just a little bit easier, but sometimes the fish really like that erratic action of me ripping a lipless crankbait out of the grass, and it will generate more strikes than a chatterbait. So I would throw both in the same situations and experiment to see what the fish like best on any given day. After that, we have the deep diving crankbait. And I actually throw this bait in the exact same place as I throw the Alabama rig the offshore areas in 5 to 15 feet of water leading into spawning pockets. I usually throw this bait when I can't throw the Alabama rig because it's outlawed in tournaments, though I'll always choose the Alabama rig over the deep diving crankbait when that's an option. My go-to deep diving crankbait is a Striking 6XD, though I do like to throw the 5XD, the 8XD, and the 10XD depending on how deep the offshore structure is that I'm fishing. Really quick guys, if you've enjoyed this video up to this point and want to check out some of the lures I've talked about in this video, We'd appreciate if you headed over to fishthemoment.com, then went to the support fish the moment page. Here you'll find our tackle warehouse affiliate link. All you have to do is click on this link and then check out on tacklewarehouse.com. If you do this, we get a small percentage of the profit of any purchases you make. If you want to support the channel further, you can even bookmark this page so that all of your future purchases will help support the channel. We really appreciate it. As we change the season to the spawn, you can see my top five baits in this season. 
One thing to call out is that I don't fish during the spawn that often and actually try to fish in the pre-spawn or the post-spawn and avoid spawning bass just because it's not my favorite way to fish. This means I only have 15 fishing trips to go off of for this analysis and it probably skewed the data a little bit. From data I do have, you can see that the only two baits that I throw often that produce good quality fish are the tube and the frog. As we change up the visualization, you can see the tube and the frog have the highest big bass index scores. Now one thing to call out is that the Cinco has a very low score, negative 32. But the reason for that, I believe, is because I am trying to fish a Cinco in clear water while sight fishing, and I'm just not very good at sight fishing. While on the other hand, I'm throwing the tube and the frog in dirtier water and I'm blind sight fishing, which is basically just casting a bait randomly into areas where I expect fish to be bedding. And when I do fish during the spawn, this is my preferred approach, which is why I catch bigger fish on these baits. However, when I'm fishing in clear water, I usually stick to a Senko, a creature bait, or a fluke, and I'm just not that great at fishing in clear water during the spawn sight fishing, and this is why the data shows that I'm not catching as many big fish on these lures. Moving quickly on to a new season where I have more data and more experience, we have the post spawn. Here are my top five baits, and you can see the two baits that have a positive big bass index score are the fluke and the chatterbait. As you can see on this chart, the fluke has a plus 10 big bass index, and the chatterbait has a plus 18 index. Both these baits have been producers of big fish forming the post spawn for years. I believe that the reason for this is because they imitate the two primary forages of big bass in the post spawn, which are bluegill and shad that are spawning. I'm usually throwing these baits around shallow, visible cover like grass, laydowns, riprap, or literally any other type of cover I can find, and I just try to make as many casts of these baits a day as possible, looking for roaming and cruising post-spawn bass. This is usually where the biggest bass are setting up in the post-spawn, and whenever I get a bite on one of these baits, there's a great chance it's gonna be a four plus pounder. My go-to fluke in the post-spawn is the five inch Strike King Caffeine Shad. I always rig it on a six shot EWG hook and I throw it on a bait caster with 15 pound test. This fluke is pretty heavy and you can skip it around cover and make long casts with it to cover water quickly. My go to chatterbait is the original Z Man chatterbait. I've been throwing it for 12 years and I've tested all of the new chatterbaits that have come on the market that are more expensive and for whatever reason I just don't seem to get any more bites or bigger bites on the $15 chatterbaits versus the $4. Z Man original chatterbait. So I just stick with that and I usually put a Strike King Menace Scrub trailer on the back and I'm usually throwing it in either a shad color, like a white color, or in a green pumpkin color. Here's a look at the other baits that have a positive big bass index score in the post spawn. First up, we have a topwater frog. I love throwing a frog around heavy vegetation and heavy cover in that post spawn period and I usually will pick it up when I can't throw the fluke or the chatterbait in an area because I'm getting hung up too often, or if I need to fish a bait on heavier line, like around thick lily pads or thick grass. My go-to frog is the Spro Bronze Eye Popping Frog in the red ear color. Next up, we have a deep diving crankbait with a plus three big bass index score. This is the only offshore bait among my top five lures. And the reason I like throwing a deep diving crankbait in the post spawn is because at times you can find small groups of fish that move offshore immediately after spawning. They'll be on shallow ledges, maybe secondary points, and there's not gonna be a lot of fish in this position, but if you can find them, you can usually catch some really big fish. What I'll do is just work that crankbait down there in five to 20 feet of water, and if I get on a school of fish, a lot of times I'm catching multiple three and four pounders off of one area. The final bait is a swim jig. And I actually throw this bait in the same areas I fish the chatterbait, the fluke, and the frog. For some reason, bass just seem to prefer a swim jig over these other baits on certain days, and they'll always have all four of these baits on deck of the boat, and I'm going to switch between them quite often to see what the bass prefer best on each given fishing day. Changing the season again, we have the summertime. Here are my top five baits, and you can see that my top three baits all have a positive big bass index score. Changing the visualization, we can see that the deep diving crankbait has the highest big bass index score at a plus 13. It's a lot higher than the other baits, and the reason for this is because I'm usually throwing this bait when the bass are the most aggressive in the summer. This is when there's either heavy current or heavy wind on my fisheries. Whenever you have current and wind, it's going to position these fish on top of offshore structure, like ledges or points, and those big bass will get really aggressive. This makes them really susceptible to that deep diving crankbait, and I can make a lot of casts quickly and capitalize on that feeding window. However, when there's no wind and no current, the bass won't react very well to a deep diving crankbait, and therefore I won't throw it. 
Instead, I'll pick up a big worm or a football jig. These baits excel when you have no wind and you have bright bluebird skies. However, it also means I'm throwing them when the bass are less aggressive. Therefore, if I use this bait the same amount as I use a deep diving crankbait, I'm probably expected to catch fewer big bass just because I'm throwing the baits when the bass are less active. This is why the deep diving crankbait has a 10 point higher index score than these bottom baits. They both produce big fish for me, it's just the data is a little bit skewed because I'm only throwing that deep diving crankbait when those bass are at their most aggressive state. I do throw all these baits on the exact same areas, which will be offshore ledges, points, or humps, and I've actually made a complete guide to offshore ledge fishing in the summertime if you want to check out that video, and I talk about how the current and the wind and the conditions affect fish offshore, as well as how to identify ledges and pretty much everything you need to know about offshore fishing in the summertime. If we change up the visualization a little bit, you can see my top five baits based on big bass index score in the summertime. Surprisingly, two of the baits are actually shallow water fishing lures, the buzz bait and the flipping jig. I don't throw these baits very often, but when I do, they produce a lot of big fish for me. I only throw the buzz bait 4% of the time, but it produces 8% of my four plus pound bass. Likewise, I only use the flipping jig 1% of the time in the summer, but when I do, it produces 4% of my four plus pound bass. While I prefer to fish offshore in the summertime, I will slide up shallow when the conditions are right. For the buzz bait, I'll usually go up shallow when we have a lot of wind, cloud cover, and rain on a given fishing day. This can make the offshore bite a little bit tough, but it makes a shallow bite great, and I'll just keep that buzz bait in my hand all day long and throw it around shallow cover, and I catch some giant fish this way. I turn to the flipping jig when the lake is flooded in the summertime. This is usually when the lake is 4 to 10 feet high, and I look for flooded, shallow bushes and trees and flip a 1 ounce jig in there. A lot of times if you can get that jig through those trees, there'll be big bass waiting for you, and you can catch some giants in the summer flipping shallow, flooded cover. My go-to buzzbait is the War Eagle Buzz Toad Buzzbait in all black. My go-to flipping jig is the 3 quarter ounce or 1 ounce Strike King Hack Attack Heavy Cover Flipping Jig. You can also see that the paddle tail swim bait has a positive big bass index for me in the summertime. This is a very situational bait for me, and I only throw it when bass are suspended over the creek channel close to the lip of an offshore ledge. These fish are not easy to catch on a football jig or a crankbait, but I can bring that swim bait over the top of the ledge and then let it fall down the creek channel, and if I burn it or stop it in the right way, I can usually generate some really big bites in the summertime. The last season we have to cover is the fall, and I believe this is the toughest season of the year to fish. This actually plays out in the data because if you look at my top five baits in the fall, only one of them has a positive big bass index, and that's the football jig. Not only does the football jig have a positive big bass index score, it also has a high score at a plus 13. I find the football jig is one of the few baits that consistently produces big bass for me all fall. I don't get a lot of bites on it, but when I do, they're really good ones. My go-to location to fish a football jig in the fall is any offshore structure that's close to a creek channel. Fishers like those sharp drop-offs from shallower to deeper water in the fall, and they usually relate to some sort of cover on top of the structure in anywhere from 10 to 30 feet of water. You're not going to get a lot of bites using this technique, but if you drag around a football jig in offshore cover in these type of areas all day, it will produce some really big fish. One easy rule of thumb to remember with a football jig is that you need to throw a football jig during football season. If you're throwing it during football season, you have a big chance of catching big fish. That's the fall and the winter seasons, and you've seen that from this data. It's something that guys have been saying for years and years, and it still holds true today. Here are the other baits that have a positive big bass index score in the fall. The Big Worm at a plus 6 and the Deep Dive and Crank Bait at a plus 4 are both offshore baits, and I'll mix them in with the football jig on the offshore areas I showed you earlier. The chatterbait with a plus six and the lipless crankbait at a plus four are also great big fish baits in the fall. And I actually throw them in the exact same areas that I threw them on in the pre-spawn, which are those shallow grassy flats with ditches or just any sort of shallow grassy areas that I can find. Grass is a great place to find fall bass. And whenever you have grass in your fishery, that's the first place I would check. The last thing I want to show you is a full year analysis where I take all the fish catches from all the seasons and put them together. Here are my top five baits across the entire year. 
So you can see a football jig, a deep dive and crankbait, and a big worm all have a positive big bass index across the entire year. They're very consistent baits in pretty much every single season, especially the football jig and the deep dive and crankbait. The big worm is a little bit more situational, better in the post-spawn summer and fall, but the football jig and the deep dive and crankbait are definitely year-round players. It's also important to call out that these are both offshore fishing lures, and I spend the majority of my time throughout the year fishing offshore. This might mean that the results will differ for you because you might not fish offshore as often as I do, and so take these results in context knowing that they're based on my fishing days and my fishing experiences. Your lakes may be different from mine, and your style of fishing might also differ as well. So it may not be a bad idea to do this analysis for yourself as well to see how your results might differ from mine. But what I can conclude is that if you are going to fish offshore any time of the year, you definitely need to pick up a fish the moment offshore jig as well as a deep dive and crankbait because if you do, you're going to put a lot of big bass in the boat. And that's it for this video, guys. If you're still here after I threw all that bass fishing data at you, then you're definitely a bass fishing nerd just like me. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and if you really liked it, I'd appreciate it if you would leave a like down below on the video. It really helps get out the video to more people, it helps with the YouTube algorithm, all the data stuff that we talked about in this video, and it really helps out the channel. If you want more content like this, I'd also recommend subscribing to the Fish the Moment YouTube channel. We're putting out one high quality video like this every single week, as well as a live stream where we break down tournament strategies, as well as fishing tips that you can use to catch more fish year round. So thanks for checking out the video, and I'll see you all next one.